Hi there, this is Carm at Carm3D.net and I'm going to do a little tutorial here on some tricks for conserving memory when uh, doing displacement mapping. Uh, what you see before you is a render of a scene I threw together you know, your basic terrain, I put some water there just for fun. Uh, the terrain is rendering at seven subdivisions per polygon and uh, let's uh, take a look at that here in the scene. Uh, right now the display setup is five. So um, if you're on a 32-bit system like I am and you play with displacement you find yourself running out of memory frequently and uh, this is you know 9.6 I'm using latest and greatest so uh, let's look at ways we can trick the system into letting us squeeze some more polygons out of here. Okay, so let's uh, add a second camera. I'll call this bird's eye cam. And let's move this out and up and up so we can see what we're dealing with here. Okay, I got too much fog going on. I might have to turn that off and see what we can do without having to turn it off. Where is the camera? Oh, here's the camera. Let's turn that fog off temporarily. Bear with me. Okay. Now, we got the camera looking out in this direction. And uh let me let me move this up even higher now that we can see everything. Get a better view of the action. Okay. I'm going to take my other camera and uh, to help further illustrate this point I'm going to move him further along. That looks good enough. Okay, I'm going to switch cameras again. Okay, so we got our... let me move my light out of the way. Hang on. Okay. All right, so here's our camera, and when I click on it, oh, that's not right. Okay, let me go to perspective view so I can do that without having to lose everything. All right. So here's my camera, and the first thing I'm going to do is assign the distance from camera trick which I'm sure most of you heard of already so uh, but since we're dealing with two cameras I'm gonna use distance to object so to avoid confusion so I'm gonna make a null called cam null and uh, with my parent in place turned off I'll parent that guy to the main camera and I'll use that as my distance gauge so with the object selected I'll go in here. Uh, we got to change this to per polygon level. Hit the T button, and we choose our gradient distance to object and cam null. Okay, so let's say um, let's see what kind of scale we're dealing with here. Uh, let me state that it's fairly critical that you do not scale your terrain up or down, so you should model your terrain at actual size. So uh, my grid is at, uh, let, me, let me scale this down so you can see what I'm looking at. Right here in the corner is my grid size. I'm going to up that 5. OK, 
Okay, so now I can count a little better. So these little grid squares are 5 meters. So we'll say 1, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. So we'll say at 20, we're going to have this go from... Well, we were rendering at 7 before. Let, we can bump it up now since we're going to lower it off in the distance. So let's say 12 here, and then at 20 meters, set the max range to 25 there, and this one's going to be 20, and we'll set this to 3. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I'm going to save my scene so I don't lose everything I just did if I crash. And we're going to go into the bird's eye cam when we render it, so that way... Sorry, I didn't recenter my view. We'll, we'll see it detailed here, and then it should be simpler as it goes out further away. So let's hit render. Actually, let me turn off all these bells and whistles, too, first. Okay, that'll render faster. Okay, I can see it happening, but just to exaggerate it, we're going to have it trail off down to one as it reaches that farthest distance. So it should be more obvious when I hit render. Okay, now you can clearly see even before I abort the window there. There, you can see it's more crinkly in the center and then out towards here, it's, it's smooth city. So, uh, that means I can crank this up higher. So let's say, let's see if you can get away with 16 without crashing. And now let's go back to our other camera. and see what that looks like. No problem so far. Okay. So, clearly it looks awful back here, but this is just for example. And uh, let's, let's really crank this up, just for fun. We got time. I'll do that before I start the next part. Let's see if we can make it crash. 30. Okay, cool. Now, this is uh, probably nothing you haven't seen before, but in the next part, we're going to do some more trickier stuff to get even more polygons squeezed out without having to lose so much quality. So I'll see you in the next part.